So rather even than, the, I think, the fourth quarter numbers, perhaps the biggest news uh, in this report was 7,957 registrations of interest, more than double uh, the number since your last update back in September 2019. The reason you're launching this One Small Step initiative today, refundable $1,000 deposits towards that next tranche of tickets when they come available for sale. Um, how many of those nearly 8,000 folks that have said that they're interested, do you expect to convert over to actual ticket sales? Well, we'll see. I mean, part of the reason why we're doing this is to sort of test that basic proposition, right? I mean, we have out there a whole bunch of people who have said that they want to fly to space, and then we already have 600 people who have essentially bought tickets, and uh, so we're trying to sort of get a sense of how we can move those people through the sales pipeline. And one small step, which people can now sign up for today, if they go to our website, you can just sign up and, and put down your $1,000 and sort of get the, you'll, you'll be at the front of the queue when we open up uh, ticket sales uh, at some point this year. Are you going to give us some guidance on when that could be? Well, we'll see. I mean, we're doing it step by step, right? So this is a first step. And then obviously everybody's interested. When are we going to release the next tranche of tickets? We'll do it when we think is the right point. But uh, this is a really big step for us to reopen after we've been closed, essentially a soft close for, you know, almost a year and a half now. What's pricing going to look like? Because I know the first 603 uh, that bought tickets, it was between 200 and $250,000 a ticket. You've uh, signaled that, that a, this next round could be higher when those ticket sales do actually open up. How high are we talking about? Well, I think, you know, um, we're going to enter, we're going to explain our premium pricing strategies as we go through the year. I think you're going to see higher prices. Um, what we've seen is that people uh, really want to do this. And so particularly for, you know, certain types of special flights, maybe earlier flights or flights with particular people, you know, you could see prices that are, you know, three, four, five, even I could even imagine a million dollars for certain very special flights. A million flights. dollars. Potentially. I mean, we'll see. You know, we, we've got a whole strategy. And I think that you'll see a range of prices uh, as we think through the different product levels, just like you have on something else that, that could uh, potentially, um, you know, be exciting to people. How much of this interest is coming from the U.S. versus abroad? And I ask that in part because I know one of the things you talked about on the call, the conference call last night, was international expansion. Yeah, you know, this is really exciting to me. I mean, I think, like, long term, both Richard Branson and I are excited about a future in which we have, like, maybe a spaceport on every continent, right? Like, wouldn't that be exciting? We do something in Europe. We do something in the Middle East, Asia. Um, that's what we're working towards. It's not going to be tomorrow. This is something that's, that's several years off. But we're putting those pieces down by signing MOUs and different types of agreements with, for example, the United Arab Emirates and also Italy. Interesting. How much of that is also towards long-term infrastructure for hypersonic point-to-point -point travel from continent to continent, which is something you and I have talked about in the past and certainly something, at least from a Wall Street perspective, longer term is seen as maybe even the bigger opportunity beyond space tourism. I think it's an interesting building block. Like, obviously, what we hope to do with a winged vehicle, we're like the only company flying a supersonic vehicle with people inside that has wings today. Like, right, and we're not going to, you know, people are going to, uh, we're going to be the only ones doing that for a long time to come. I think what we want to do is integrate our vehicle system with wings um, into national airspace systems. So, in other words, we want them to be able to land at airports, right? That's a, that's a really big advantage because then you can hook into local transport, you know, s systems. So, long term, I think um, uh, we want to go to airports, but I think it's a nice building block towards that goal. Would you have to tap into air traffic control? Yeah, yeah, no, but that's the whole point, yeah, right? Because you want to be I able to I'm sequence right, into air traffic right, control. I, I guess I'm wondering how equipped they are to handle your kind of flight. Well, you would you would slow down a little bit before <laughs> you don't, like, rock it in at yeah. Mach 5. You know, so you, that's the great thing about, you know, I think wing systems is you'll be able to come in, slow down to, you know, subsonic speeds, and then you'll sequence into normal air traffic control uh, routes. Do you have to market at all tickets, or is this already word of mouth, the, the audience you're going after knows... Well, as you know, we basically have not done any marketing in our, like, 15-year history, right? It's, all, it's basically all been inbound. We're really excited to have um, a network of global uh, space agents. We call them, you know, like our space travel agents, essentially. And we, we have a partnership with Virtuoso Network. So they're, they're going to help us do this. But really, most of it has been inbound to date. 